Hello Timber Sellers, this is a tutorial to help you respond to a BRIP. So once you have logged in, you would simply go to the Timber Seller menu item and the, from the drop down list, you're choosing the BRIP received and SIP submitted option. You are then presented uh, with a table of all the BRIPs that you've received and in this example there is only one active currently. The number three refers to how many days uh, the BRIP still has to go before it expires. This red bar will draw down as time goes on until it reaches zero and then it will disappear and you will be unable to respond to it with your SIP. To respond to a BRIP, you click on that little blue arrow over there and you go to the SIP to be submitted option. You can see the little hand appears as you touch on the line. Okay, so when you see this table there are a few things that you as the seller can change the one is your bundle size you will see for some of these items i don't currently have any bundle sizes in here so for me to change them i simply click on that cell and i add the information and i'm just going to keep it uh, the same as the standard bundle size um, I'm not going to change it, but if you do have uh, bundle sizes that differ to the, the standard, then of course you must add those in as you wish. Please, if I can draw your attention, if you click on this little checkbox over here, it will save the changes you make from here into your master database, which means that for your next BRIP that you receive and you respond with a SIP, the information that you added will automatically be pulled in. So that was the bundle sizes that I could change. You can also see that my rand per cubic meter, I just have a dummy information over here. This is just a, an example. Of course, I'm not going to sell my timber for zero rand. So you also put in your X mil prices, X fat here. I'm just putting in a hundred rand for demonstration purposes. Okay. Now the way it stands now, I am saying, sorry, let's just change that number there. Okay, there we go. The way it's, it stands now is that I am saying I can totally match exactly what the buyer wanted. In other words, they wanted two bundles of 38, 38 by 6 meter, solids only. Now, if I'm unable to match that, there's two things that are possible here. One, I might not be able to only have solids only I might have finger joint only or finger joint and solid that's one thing I need to potentially change but you can see even though the number is here you see I can change over here the detail of uh, the joint option so I can change it there to say what it's going to be I can also change the number of bundles uh, that are possible so in this example, if I only was able to make one bundle, I would add one bundle to the list. It will automatically tell the buyer that what I'm offering is less than what they originally asked for. I can make that up by cloning this row. Okay, that's added a row at the bottom. And I could potentially say I do have some uh, finger joint only for that for that uh, item and I can make one bundle for that. Now in this example you can see it's got a value of 336 whereas that one is minus 336. So what we're telling the user here is that I'm giving them or offering them something in addition to what they asked for. So just with this very simple example you can see how you are able to change the join option you are able to add your own bundle size. You are able to change your prices over here. Lastly, just to say that um, you can add a discount or markup to these prices. Now, bear in mind, these prices are coming from your master database automatically pulled in, or you add them in here now and you can save them to your master database, which will happen as once you submit this. But if you want to have a quick markup or discount, 
this 5% will be added to these figures over here. If you wanted to have a discount, it would be simple, simply minus 5. So it's representing a percentage mark up or mark down. Your transportation cost is added. And again, it can either be a lump sum or it can be specified as a rand per cubic meter. If you specify a rand per cubic meter, then uh, it'll type, take whatever value you have, let's say 150, and it'll times it by the cubic meters on the, uh, on the BRIP uh, or on the SIP in this case to get the total. So I'm just going to, for example purposes, just add 100 rand you are then uh, asked to, to uh, specify the delivery date that you're prepared to commit to. You can see the delivery date that the buyer wanted the timber. When you respond, that day that you see is the date that the buyer asked for the timber. If you choose a day after that, you will see an additional extra number of days is listed over here. And that's one of the criteria that the buyers will look at some buyers will want the timber as close to the date uh, that they asked for it. You can add a reference number that is optional. You might have an internal system and if not, you are then in a position to submit your SIP. You are asked to confirm. Are you sure? Make sure that everything is all right. If okay, away you go and it is then sent to the buyer. Well done and thank you for your attention.